What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Thank you guys for the support on the last episode. Um, I know it was a long episode. I know it wasn't as intense as the typical Corpse Party is, um, or episode is, rather. So, I know it's maybe even a little bit to get through. I know that it wasn't really my favorite aspect of Corpse Party in general, and I'm really looking to get through this so that we can get to know the characters again, we can start to get into what makes Corpse Party Corpse Party, really. And, yeah, with that being said, let's let's hop right back in. We got Mayu in front of us. Good morning. Ah, uh, morning. Yeah, that looks like it'll be plenty. Hey, we got Yoshiki as well. Hey. Morning, Kishinuma. Morning, Satoshi. Satoshi? Hmm? Ah, uh, Naomi, what's going on? Seemed a bit out of sorts. He was just staring blankly. Was he still half asleep? It bothered me to see him like that, but I literally had my hands full, so I really couldn't dwell on it. I pushed on into the classroom. I will say it's a little disappointing that we've seen the same sprites uh, or character art thus far. More or less. We've seen a little bit of new Seiko, admittedly. But... but I couldn't actually see what was in front of my feet, and I have to admit it was kind of scary. It'd be a real challenge not to drop anything. <laughs> the way she said that. Now me. Good morning, my dear. <laughs> God, Seiko, stop grabbing my butt. Haven't we already said our good mornings anyway? <laughs> oh, but how can I resist an opportunity like this? Now my hands restricted, unable to fend off my advances. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Seiko. Did she drop everything? Look what you did! And of course, everyone's just okay with this. Oh, now that's no good. Our table has to be kept clean. Guess we'll just have to go wash it all again. Here, I'll help. Thanks. Sorry for the trouble. Hey, look at that. That's pretty cool. I like this art and everything. The music's hype and everything. And so began the culture festival. All day we wore the clothes Suzumoto prepared for us and served red bean soup to our schoolmates. She had a lot of costuming experience, having worked on that side of things in the drama club for quite some time. She even did the sewing herself, putting all her practice to the test. And the kimonos she prepared for us really were all of exceptional quality. So good, in fact, that they became a centerpiece for us, bringing in students from the junior and senior high divisions alike. It made for a busy day. When we weren't tending to customers, we were chasing after that slacker Kishinuma or taking time to check out some of the other class projects. It was a really fun day. In the end, not only do we have a really fun day, we also wound up being the most popular classroom in the whole festival. All in all, a rousing success. That's great. I'm glad to hear that, of course. Finally, the clock struck six. And we're all going to be alone in the school. Ayumi's going to be like, Hey guys, we should be friends forever. 
As our busy day drew, drew to a close, we all stood around talking. We kept saying we should clean up, but that kind of didn't happen. Before I knew it, there were only seven of us left in the room. Satoshi, the class rep, Seiko, Morishige, Kishinuma, Suzumoto, and myself. Seemed everyone else had already gone home. Our homeroom TA, Yui Sensei, showed up with Satoshi's little sister, Yuka, in tow. But they were it. We nine became the de facto cleanup crew. Of course, cleanup crew. It's raining outside too, it seems. Ah, uh, finally done. Good work, everyone. The place is looking like a real classroom again. <laughs> Those bakas who went home without helping are sure going to get a piece of my mind tomorrow, though. Hmm. Not much of a class rep if I can't even hold everyone together long enough to clean up after ourselves. Though you did manage to keep Kishinuma here, surprisingly. <laughs> I guess it's not too surprising given, uh, you know, they got a little bit of a ship 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 going on. Oh, shut up. Suzumoto san, anata to sugoseta kono su kagetsu. Suzumoto, I just want to say it's been really fun having you here these last few months. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, are we actually going through the events of the first one? Like, what? I can't tell you how many times your positive energy helped bo bolster my spirits. What is going on with the story here? Always remember that you're loved and respected. We may not have said much to that effect, but we've all been watching you blossom here. I lent a hand where I could and did my best to help guide you, but ultimately you walked your own path and have become a fine young woman. Aww. It takes a special person to achieve what you've done without even realizing it. It's been an honor to serve as your homeroom teacher. TA, rather. I wish you all the best at your new school. Yes, yeah, so she is transferring. This is just like the beginning of the first course party. I wonder if this is just like a more detailed like recollection of those events. Thank you. Yeah, unfortunately, this teary farewell brought us all back to reality. During the holidays following the cultural festival, Suzumoto was being transferred. Do you think, like, oh, Naomi was talking about deja vu and such? Do you think she's, like, reliving these events? But she has, like, lingering connections back to reality, like the bruise on Seiko's neck, something like that. This was to be her last day at Kisaragi Academy High School. Everyone here loved her, so this was a sad occasion indeed. She was truly a kind person, possessing no ulterior motives and harboring no ill will toward anyone. The thought of her leaving was just plain depressing. But time waits for no one, and sadly the time had come to say our goodbyes. <gasps> I heard it. I heard it. Shiawase no Sachiko-san. No, as one final hurrah, our occult-obsessed class rep asked us to perform some friendship ritual called Sachiko Ever After. So I think this is Nami re recollecting and uh, just recounting the events from the first game, at least thus far. I feel like this is to maybe help people who didn't 
play through the first game, or maybe it had been a while, so they wanted to refresh people's memories. Upon mentioning it, she produced a paper doll from her bag. It looked a lot like those proxy dolls you'll sometimes see in Shinto shrines designed to absorb bad karma in somebody's place. Visually, this whole thing just seemed like the setup for a cursed seance or something. It was kind of scary, and I wasn't the only one who thought so. <laughs> this is, well, it's a charm that I found on the internet. If we do it right, then all of us will be together forever. Or we'll always be friends. Anyway, that's the that's the gist of it. We know what happened. Interesting. So how does it work? What was that sound effect? Oh. No, don't do this. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Is this the alternate timeline? Oh, do you remember? There's like one bad ending from the very first game where you become Satoshi. Or you're as Satoshi, you go back. But I don't think everyone else comes back with you, so it's just you. And then you try, you go back to this day and you try to warn everyone about it. You say no, and then you end up going back into it. Is that the timeline we're picking up? Seriously, don't do this. It's dangerous. Our lives are online. This is what. Stuff is starting to get interesting now. Now, you're catching my attention. You're you're really dragging me in. You're pulling me in with, right now, uh, Book of Shadows. This is when I'm starting to really get into it. Satoshi! Satoshi! Inochi to amata ogesa da na. Don't you think that's going a bit overboard? <laughs> Look, I'm not joking, I'm dead serious here. Interesting. Satoshi had always been easily spooked, and in true form he was pleading for his life that we stop what we were doing. It didn't sound that scary though. Interesting, so is this an alternate timeline? Again, don't answer these questions, obviously. Don't worry, Mochira-kun. This isn't my usual creepy fare. I gotta say, it's rare to see you get this worked up. Oh my. In the end, eight of us proceeded with the residual or with the ritual as planned while Satoshi sat it out off to the side, tears in his eyes. Yo, this is intense. This is intense. What's what's gonna happen? Is Satoshi not gonna be with them? Is he gonna be brought along regardless? Is this continuation of that one wrong end from before? I kind of felt bad for him. But this was for Suzumoto. We all wanted to give her the best possible send off. So all I could really do was silently wonder what had gotten into him. Please, I'm begging you, stop this. Don't go through with it. Why won't anyone listen to me? He's really serious, like as serious as I've ever seen him. What is it, Satoshi? What is it that has you so worried? This, this is. It's a time loop. This has happened before. All of this, I remember it. And what's coming next is worse than you could possibly imagine. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm through trying to convince you. Just be a good boy and wait for us to finish. Okay, no, guys, you need to listen to Satoshi. You need to listen to him. 
a time loop? Is he experiencing deja vu like me? Is some new destiny being born inside of him, like the class rep had said before? Come to think of it, this does feel a little familiar. This room, this atmosphere, this charm. Whoa, and this music too. I obediently dug my nails into the paper doll, but all the while I was frantically foraging through my memories, trying to figure out what I was missing. No, no, don't do it, don't do it. We're going to pull on it until it rips apart into nine pieces, okay? On the count of three. <laughs> oh no, with pallid face, Satoshi quickly rushed over and grabbed the paper doll himself. He was joining us after all, it seemed. Oh no, he's probably like, if they're going to go alone, they're, they're going to need me to help and everything. Everyone else smiled at him as if to say, finally, you've come to your senses, but I was just starting to get a really bad feeling about this. No, no, there's, there's definitely something wrong here. Ready? One, two... Oh no... Oh no... No! As soon as I reached the hallway, I fell to my knees with a thud. No. No, no, no. What was that? A person? It was pitch black, but I swear it was shaped like the per like a person. It's the infirmary monster. Uh. The school infirmary door hung open near me, and in my panic state I swore I'd seen a black shadowy figure within it. Where are we now? How much time has passed? Oh, that looks awful. All too familiar. Yikes. My mind had been completely overtaken with fear. What was that? I don't know. Are we are we back in Heavenly Host? Do we have our memories of the previous time? Are we in this bad, this alternate timeline that was a wrong end to the first one? What just happened? That dark, misty entity came toward me and entered my body from every orifice. It came through my ears, my mouth. I felt an enormous lump in my throat, blocking the flow of air into my lungs and momentarily teetering me on the brink of unconsciousness. I was almost killed. It felt as if a cold hand reached into my body and grabbed hold of my life's energy, turning all my internal organs inside out and leaving me for dead. My stomach was churning, my bowels were on fire, and my legs were all twisted around themselves. Can pressure alone disrupt the human body this much? Oh, 
The odor and flavor of my own gastric juice is still gnawing at the back of my throat. I felt like I was going to throw up again, but I held it in. I remember this. This place, these circumstances. I... I've been here before. I know I have. I'm so interested in what was all this like time loop stuff and how it connects. After performing the Sachiko Ever After ritual, there was a huge noise, then a huge hole appeared in the floor. And then I was here, in this school. There was no sign of Satoshi, or Yui Sensei, or the class rep, or anyone else. Only Seiko was still near me, collapsed in a heap on the floor. So it seems like we might be going through similar events or in a similar, like, scenario to the first game, but slightly different because of memories and such. Seiko and I were together two and were working on the Seiko and I explored the decaying building as best as we could, but there was no way out. Not a single window or outer door could be moved or even broken. Just as our last shreds of hope had begun to vanish, despair, we suddenly heard Satoshi's little sister, Yuka, cry out from somewhere just out of sight. I'd sprained my ankle pretty badly and couldn't walk very well, so Seiko went off alone to find her while I rested up in the infirmary. 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 And that's when the dark shadowy figure showed up and began attacking. Are we are we just recounting the first event or like the first game like like very visual novel style? We're not moving or anything like that. I was hoping to in the very first game or in the very first game, the very first episode, get to some gameplay or something like that. But uh here we are. <laughs> I was scared, so scared, so scared, so very scared. My teeth were chattering and my lips were quivering as if they had a mind of their own. Why would she leave me alone like that? Why would she leave me alone like that? I told her I'd go with her to look for Yuka. So why? Why did she leave me behind? Was I going to slow her down? Was I going to get in her way? Naomi, what happened? Are you okay? What? Oh my god, are you alright? I'm so sorry I left you by yourself. Just seeing Seiko's face quelled my shivers. Whenever she's around, I feel so at ease, and at that moment I just wanted to cling on to her and cry my eyes out. Yeah, I'm I'm still decently confused. We're, it seems like we're kind of just going through the events of the first game more or less we haven't gotten any like deaths or anything like that so it doesn't seem like the fact that they kind of have this deja vu feeling or these memories is changing much i should have just done it but instead <gasps> no not this again no not this again just leave me alone do you have any idea how scared i was I'm, I'm sorry, Nami. Come on, let's try to find a way out of here together. Why 
No. Don't do it again, Naomi. What's the point? Just forget about it. Leave it alone. We're never getting out of here. Maybe, maybe we're just recounting the events leading up to Seiko's death? Maybe it was the safety of Seiko's presence that did it, but all the fear welling up within me suddenly turned to anger. I was like a spoiled child. Nothing could come out or come out of lashing out like this. Seiko didn't do anything wrong, I, I knew that, but I couldn't stop myself from saying what I said. But you need to, otherwise, and you should know. She was genuinely concerned about me, and I'd sworn to myself that I'd protect her, but my sense of reason was fighting a losing battle. You realize we've gone missing, right? How do you think my mother's going to feel? She's going to be worried sick about me, and there's nothing I can do. Naomi, please, don't say things like that. It's going to be alright. Like heck it is. She's going to keep searching for me until the day I finally come home. She has work, you know. This whole situation is not right. As long as I'm here, I'm nothing but a nuisance to her. I'm a terrible daughter. And we're just gonna die here anyway, so all the time she spends looking for me will be wasted. Hmm. Yeah, I think this might all be in Naomi's mind. She might be dreaming, she might be going through over and over the events that led up to Seiko's death as some sort of an attempt at a coping mechanism for the fact that she's dead now. By this time my mind had been completely overtaken, I wasn't myself anymore. I was running on autopilot, horrified by the words coming from my mouth. No, I know how this ends. You're wrong. Families aren't like that. It won't be a nuisance. It won't be a burden, and you're not terrible. I don't know exactly how to say this, but when there are loved ones involved, you'll do anything for them. There was again, deja vu. Everything was falling into place. Do you think this is maybe indicating her sense of helplessness with regards to the situation where she is now? I knew what was going to happen. I knew what fate had in store if we continued down this road. But I guess I can see where you're coming from. Your mother is a really kind person. The last thing you'd want to do is worry her. That's why we need to make sure that doesn't happen. Right, Naomi? We need to make we need to get back home. I don't know how it is for you and your family, but normal people don't work that way. Oh. No, it's happening. Seiko's going to get hanged, she's going to die! Oh no... I have to apologize! Oh no, I need some water. This is too intense. I don't want you of all people to speak to me like that. Please, Naomi, tell me that's not how you really feel. Seiko... Seiko... Can we, do we choose? Oh, we can actually do something. Yes, we're going to apologize. 
If I didn't say something to calm her down, Seiko would run off, and I knew she couldn't be by herself right now. No. So I pulled myself together and tried apologizing to her, but the words. Not again, not again. The words wouldn't come. As soon as I tried to form them, something caught itself in my throat. I found myself unable to breathe and doubled over in a fit. Naomi, are you okay? I'm sorry, Naomi. If I'm bothering you, I'll go. I hate to leave your side, but if that's what you want, I won't argue. Oh no. Oh no, it's gonna happen again. Wait! Wait! Seiko. No. Seiko ran off into the distance, her figure growing smaller and darker until it vanished altogether. I knew I'd made an awful, irreversible mistake. Seiko's eyes were turned to my thoughts, and some fear came back. That sense of dread I'd felt moments before had come back full force. I could sense a malevolence within me, an outside hand that made me lash out at Seiko, and that's probably gonna make you hang her. Hmm? Felt like something was in my mouth. I had no idea what, but there was definitely something in there. I stuck my finger in and tried to dig it out. What is. what's going on with that? <laughs> Whoa. What? My finger found something and pulled, and out from my throat came large clumps of long black hair, like like Sachiko's hair, or like the that from the infirmary. Yo, that is that is creepy. I just kept pulling and pulling. I couldn't believe how much there was. Is she like already possessed? The strand stretched all the way from my stomach through my esophagus into my hands. And even then, there was still more to pull. The motion was unnatural and was creating a repulsive, sickening sensation along my tonsils. I felt like I was going to throw up again. Where the heck did all this hair come from? Was this all stuck in my throat? At the very least, this is a really cool portrayal and interesting description, and, or rather, redescription of events from the first game. <gasps> no! It was only a faint notion before, but now I was certain. I was remembering some future event. I didn't know why or how, but I was repeating time. Am I just no? Not allowed to apologize? I could feel a dark will guiding me. Someone or something wanted Seiko to be killed in this timeline as well. But I wasn't going to let it happen. Not without a fight. Ooh, what's going on now? 
国追いかけなきゃ謝ろうあの子一人にしちゃダメ I have to go after her. I have to apologize. I can't leave her alone like this. Yes, you do, Naomi. You have to go after her. You have to fix things. How are we going to be able to apologize, though, with like this hair thing? Is it good? Are we actually able to make a difference? Are we actually able to change things? Unlike the other timeline, unlike probably the countless times you've repeated this before, Naomi. I don't know, but maybe we'll get one step closer in the next episode. Okay, so this is the corpse party I remember and really enjoy. Now that we're back in these creepy environments, we're starting to figure out, you know, the mysteries, the questions are being asked, we're looking for answers. The music is creepy. I, This is the corpse party I know and love. So I'm definitely looking forward to potentially running after Seiko. Are we just going to fall into the same trap? Are we going to fall back into this time loop? Is this all a dream? Is this all future Naomi's um, kind of disillusioned remembering being stuck in the past with Seiko basically on the on the borderline of lunacy I don't know I don't know but I'm really curious and looking forward to answering those questions or at least getting closer and I hope you guys are too again if you enjoyed this be sure to let me know in the comment section below if you think something similar to me uh, let me know of course and let me know what you think of this whole like alternate timeline, alternate ending from the first game. I think I am remembering that correctly. So if you guys remember similarly, do let me know in the comment section below. Or rather, if it's similar to the ending from the first game, let me know. Don't confirm whether or not this is that alternate ending's timeline or something per se. Or if you're not sure, just don't even bother. Never mind. That was that was probably a bad idea. But regardless. We did meet the cast, so uh, or re-meet the cast rather. So again, if you do have a favorite character, let me know in the comments section below. I know some of you guys might not have seen my first playthrough, so I might not know some of your guys' favorite characters. As I mentioned in the first episode, my favorite character is Seiko, so this is getting pretty emotionally torturous at this point. I really hope we can so save Seiko, but anyways, I'll see you guys next episode. But until then, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.